This bomber is so advanced, the U.S. Air Force is willing to risk flying it with just one pilot. It's built to fly 30-hour missions, penetrate the world's most lethal air defenses, carry nuclear weapons, and manage an entire battlefield. Yet one cockpit seat is being removed entirely. That decision breaks every rule strategic bombers have followed for generations, and it exposes what the B-21 Raider is really designed to become, starting with what's hiding beneath its skin. For decades, every strategic bomber in the U.S. Air Force arsenal has flown with multiple pilots in the cockpit. The B-52 carries four crew members. The B-1 has four as well. Even the cutting-edge B-2 Spirit, America's current stealth bomber, requires two fully qualified pilots to operate safely. It's been an unwritten rule. When you're flying missions that last 30 hours, penetrating the most heavily defended airspace on Earth, carrying nuclear weapons worth more than their weight in gold, you need backup. You need redundancy. You need two sets of hands on the controls, but Air Force Global Strike Command just shattered that decades-old assumption. Their recommendation for the B-21 Raider, one pilot, just one, and the second seat, it won't go to a co-pilot at all. Before we reveal what this means for the future of air combat, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss what's coming next. Instead of a second pilot, the B-21 will carry a weapons systems officer, a WIZO in military parlance. General Thomas Bussier, who led Air Force Global Strike Command, put it bluntly in his August memo to Air Force leadership. The B-21 will be crewed by one pilot and one weapons systems officer, not two pilots. This isn't just a crew change. It's a revolution in how we think about flying the most advanced aircraft ever built. To understand why this recommendation is so radical, you need to understand what the B-21 actually is. The Raider isn't just designed to drop bombs. It's a flying supercomputer wrapped in stealth technology. Technology. General Boussier's memo spelled out the breathtaking scope of the B-21's mission. Airmanship, weaponeering, electromagnetic spectrum operations, sensor management, real-time battle management, and agile replanning in combat. All simultaneously, all in the most hostile environments imaginable. The B-21 is designed to be a deep penetrating nuclear strike platform, a conventional bomber, an intelligence gathering surveillance aircraft, an electronic warfare node, a battle management hub, and potentially even an aerial controller for drone swarms all at once. It's not just a bomber. It's a flying command center that can reach anywhere on Earth, unseen and unstoppable. So if the B-21's missions are so complex, so demanding, that they require this incredible breadth of capability Capabilities. How can the Air Force possibly consider flying it with just one pilot? What could possibly make them confident enough to put that much responsibility on a single person's shoulders? The answer lies in what you can't see. The Air Force and Northrop Grumman have been unusually cryptic about what they call the B-21's revolutionary features, especially what lies beneath its skin. But AFGSC's crew recommendation reveals the truth. The B-21 must have an extreme extraordinary level of automation and artificial intelligence built into its core systems. We're not talking about autopilot. We're talking about something far more advanced, potentially an AI agent functioning as a virtual co-pilot, making decisions, managing systems, and keeping the aircraft safe even when the human pilot is overwhelmed or incapacitated. The concept of an AI co-pilot has been in development for over a decade. Since the early 2000s, DARPA has been funding a program called ALIAS, the Air Crew Labor In-Cockpit Automation System. The goal? Create artificial intelligence sophisticated enough to fly military aircraft, manage emergencies, and reduce pilot workload. Lockheed Martin developed the Matrix Autonomy Flight Control software as part of this effort. Meanwhile, companies like Shield AI and Merlin have been pushing the boundaries even further with autonomy packages that can fly everything from drones to cargo planes. Here's what makes this significant. The B-21 has been in development for more than a decade. Northrop Grumman started designing this aircraft in the early 2000s, right when AI co-pilot technology was emerging. They would have been incorporating these cutting-edge capabilities from day one, building them into the aircraft's fundamental architecture. But there is something even more revealing than the AI technology itself. Hidden in a 2015 Department of Defense Inspector General report, heavily redacted, barely noticed, 
harvest is a requirement that changes everything we thought we knew about the B21's future. If you're finding this fascinating, imagine what else we'll uncover. Smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss our deep dives into classified military technology. The 2015 Inspector General report obtained by the War Zone contains one of the few unredacted requirements for what was then called the Long Range Strike Bomber. Capable of manned and unmanned operations, the B-21 was designed from the beginning to potentially fly without any crew on board whatsoever. A memo from the Office of the Secretary of Defense confirms it. I direct the Air Force to develop an acquisition program that delivers a survivable long-range penetrating bomber capable of manned and unmanned operations. The single pilot recommendation isn't just about reducing crew size, it's a stepping stone toward fully autonomous bomber operations. Now you might be thinking, isn't flying a bomber with just one pilot dangerous? You'd be right to ask. The Air Force has faced intense criticism in the past for even considering single pilot operations on tankers and cargo planes. And those are far less demanding aircraft flying far less dangerous missions. The B-21 will fly missions lasting 30 hours or more, penetrating airspace protected by the world's most sophisticated air defense systems, carrying weapons that could change the course of history. Current B-2 Spirit bombers have two pilots specifically for safety and endurance. During long missions, one pilot can sleep on a small cot while the other flies. The B-21 will likely have similar sleeping arrangements, but with only one pilot on board, there's no backup if something goes wrong while the WSO is resting. So how does the Air Force justify this risk? What makes them believe a single pilot can safely fly the most advanced, most critical bomber in the American arsenal? The answer comes back to autonomy. Modern autonomous systems have become remarkably reliable, so reliable that some commercially available aircraft now have fully autonomous emergency landing capabilities. If Cessna can land itself when the pilot's incapacitated, imagine what a multi-billion dollar stealth bomber can do. The B-21's AI co-pilot would provide layers of redundancy that didn't exist in previous generations. If the pilot becomes incapacitated, the AI can take over. If a critical system fails, the AI can compensate. The WSO would also be trained to fly the aircraft in emergency scenarios, providing human backup. Between the AI systems, the WSO's emergency capabilities, and the pilot's primary control, the B-21 may actually be safer than older bombers with traditional two-pilot crews. Now let's talk about why having a dedicated weapon systems officer instead of a second pilot is actually a massive tactical advantage. The F-15 E-Strike Eagle pioneered this concept in tactical aviation. One pilot flying, one WSO managing the complex mission systems. But the B-21's mission systems make the F-15E look like a video game by comparison. Think about what a B-21 crew will be managing simultaneously. They're flying through hostile airspace, staying invisible to enemy radar. They're monitoring electromagnetic spectrum operations, tracking enemy communications and radar emissions. They're managing an array of sensors gathering intelligence. They're coordinating with other aircraft, possibly controlling drone swarms. They're planning and replanning strike missions in real time based on changing battlefield conditions. And they're weaponeering, determining which weapons to use, when to use them, and how to employ them for maximum effect. Having a pilot try to manage all of this would be impossible. But there's another reason why the Air Force wants a WSO in that second seat, a reason that reveals just how dramatically the B-21 will change future warfare. The B-21 isn't designed to operate alone. It's designed to be the quarterback of an entire aerial battle network. The Raider will serve as a forward node, coordinating attacks, managing information flow, and potentially directing uncrewed platforms deep inside enemy territory. That requires someone whose entire focus is on the mission, not on flying the aircraft. The pilot flies and manages the AI systems. The WSO fights the war. Together with the AI co-pilot backing them up, they become an unstoppable team operating the most lethal weapons platform ever created. And here's where things get really interesting. Remember that requirement for unmanned operations? That's not just a theoretical capability. It's a strategic game changer that the Air Force is actively planning for. In 2022, just before the B-21's official rollout, sources with direct knowledge of the program confirm that development
development was continuing with the option of integrating a pilotless capability. Consider the implications. When the B-2 Spirit bombed Iranian nuclear facilities in Operation Midnight Hammer, it required dozens of supporting aircraft, fighters, tankers, jamming aircraft, and more. Even with the B-2's incredible stealth, combat search and rescue assets had to be on standby because there was always a risk of something going wrong. When you have pilots on board, you have to be prepared to recover them if they go down. That requirement shapes every aspect of mission planning. But what if there were no pilots to rescue? What if the most dangerous missions could be flown without risking a single American life? Uncrewed B-21 operations would fundamentally change the risk calculus. The most dangerous deep strike missions, the ones that require penetrating thousands of miles into heavily defended territory, could be flown without the agonizing calculation of American lives at risk. The aircraft would still be extremely valuable, packed with sensitive technology, but the political and moral equation changes completely when no one's life is on the line. This could enable missions that would otherwise be considered too risky, giving the United States options that simply don't exist today. It's not about replacing human pilots. It's about giving commanders more tools, more flexibility, and more ways to respond to threats without unnecessary casualties. Let's ground ourselves in where the B-21 program stands today. This isn't vaporware or a concept study. These aircraft are real and they're flying. The Air Force has received two pre-production B-21s, both currently at Edwards Air Force Base in California, undergoing extensive testing. A second flying example was delivered in September, and at least four more pre-production bombers are in various stages of construction. Northrop Grumman has already received two contracts for low-rate initial production, meaning operational aircraft are coming soon. The Air Force's goal is ambitious but achievable. Begin operational flights before the end of the decade. That's less than four years away. The service plans to acquire at least 100 B-21s, five times larger than the current fleet of 20 B-20 Spirits. And there are strong indications the final fleet could be even larger. This massive expansion of the stealth bomber fleet will be transformational, according to Air Force officials. But the B-21 itself is only part of the story. There's an entire classified ecosystem being built around the Raider. The B-21 is the centerpiece of the long-range strike family of systems, a system of systems that remains largely classified. We know some parts, the AGM-181 long-range standoff cruise missile, a nuclear-armed weapon that will give the B-21 standoff strike capability. Recent photos show what appear to be LRSO prototypes under B-52 wings, revealing that the missile is well into development, but much of the LRS family remains hidden. What other weapons? What other platforms? What other capabilities are being developed in parallel? The Air Force isn't saying, but whatever they're building, it's designed to work seamlessly with the Raider, creating a strike complex unlike anything the world has ever seen. So where does the single pilot recommendation stand? As of now, it's still just a recommendation. Lieutenant General Scott Pleas, the Air Force's acting vice chief of staff, confirmed that AFGSC has submitted their recommendation for one pilot and one WSO, but emphasized that that document is pre-decisional. A decision has not been made. The Air Force has been waiting for stable leadership before making such a significant decision. General Thomas Basir, who wrote the recommendation memo, announced his retirement in October for personal and family reasons. AFGSC is getting a new commander. The Senate just confirmed General Kenneth Wilspach as the 24th Chief of Staff of the Air Force on October 30th, and he was formally sworn in. With new leadership in place, a decision could come soon. But this decision will ripple far beyond just the B-21 program. It will set precedence for how the Air Force thinks about crewing all future aircraft, and it will answer a fundamental question about the relationship between humans and artificial intelligence in combat. The Air Force has to balance competing concerns, operational effectiveness versus safety, innovation versus tradition, capability versus risk. They have to consider pilot training pipelines, WSO training programs, and the cultural change required to trust AI systems with life or death decisions. Whatever they decide will shape not just the B-21, but 
but the entire future of American air power. And given everything we know about the Raider's autonomous capabilities, the single pilot configuration seems increasingly inevitable. Step back and look at the bigger picture. The B-21 Raider represents a fundamental shift in how the United States projects power. For the first time, we'll have a stealth bomber that can be built in substantial numbers, 100 or more aircraft instead of just 20. For the first time, we'll have a penetrating strike platform with AI-driven autonomy from the ground up. For the first time, we'll have a bomber that can operate as a node in a network battle management system, coordinating operations across multiple domains simultaneously. The implications extend far beyond bomber operations. If the B-21 succeeds with a single pilot, AI-assisted configuration, every other Air Force platform will be re-evaluated. Why have two pilots on tankers if AI can provide backup? Why fully crew cargo planes for every mission if autonomous systems can handle routine flights? The entire force structure could change, and our adversaries are watching. China and Russia are developing their own next-generation bombers. They're investing heavily in AI and autonomy. The question isn't whether these technologies will come to military aviation. It's who will master them first. The B-21 gives the United States a significant head start. By the time the first Raiders reach operational squadrons, they'll have years of testing and refinement behind them. The AI systems will have logged thousands of flight hours. The integration between human crews and autonomous systems will be mature and proven. America's peer competitors will be years behind, struggling to match not just the aircraft's stealth characteristics, but the sophisticated human-machine teaming that makes it truly revolutionary. The country that masters this technology first doesn't just gain an advantage. It fundamentally rewrites the rules of air combat for the next 50 years. The B-21 Raider is more than just a new bomber. It's a window into a future where artificial intelligence and human warriors work together in ways we're only beginning to understand. Where a single pilot backed by a skilled WSO and an AI co-pilot can accomplish missions that once required entire crews. Where the line between manned and unmanned operations becomes increasingly blurred. When the first operational B 21s take flight later this decade, they may indeed have just one pilot in the cockpit, and that pilot will have something no bomber crew in history has ever had a co pilot that never gets tired, never loses focus, and can process information at superhuman speeds. It's not about replacing humans, it's about amplifying human capabilities to levels we've never seen before. So, do you think the Air Force should embrace single pilot operations on the B 21? Or is this pushing technology too far, too fast? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this deep dive into the future of air combat fascinating, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss our coverage of cutting-edge military technology. Also, don't forget to catch our previous video on Lockheed Unveils Vectus, the world's most advanced combat drone. This is something as equally exciting as the B-21 Raider.